Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to add textures to a photo in Photoshop. Hey guys, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find us on Twitter at Flurn. Today we're doing something really cool. It's like a trend that's spread like wildfire on the internet lately and it's basically taking textures and applying them to your work. And when I think of textures, there's no one better that I can think of than my friend Brooke Shaden, who's done an amazing job applying textures to her images. We're going to show some images of hers on the screen, and she's actually allowed, uh, she sent us a blog post where you guys can download some of her textures that she uses for free. So we're going to put that in the description here on YouTube and on Flurn.com. She's done an amazing job. So what we're going to be doing is taking an image that someone submitted to a contest, and I'm going to show you guys like a quick and easy way where you guys can take some textures and add them to your photos. And they make a huge, huge difference. I'm going to kind of talk about some of the ideas where like times when it's better to use photo textures and times when you don't necessarily want to use textures as much. So we're going to jump right into it. Let's go. So here's our image. This is by uh, Vornhem Volker, and uh, it's, this is a picture of his daughter. I really like this image. It's, it's gorgeous. I like the, the hair is really nice, and uh, the coloring is really great. Um, the one thing that I thought maybe could add a little bit was like the background seemed a little bit on the plain side. Um, I'd like to see it like either smoother or not as smooth. So that's where we're bringing in some textures. And for this, we're going to use textures from the Flurn Texture Pack. Now, I'm going to give you guys these textures that I'm using in this tutorial for free. All you have to do is click on the link on your screen right now, and you can go to flurn.com and download our texture pack for free. And if you guys are interested in more textures, we're going to also include a link where you guys can actually purchase the Pro Texture Pack, which has like hundreds of textures like this. So what we're going to do, we're going to choose these textures here. I'm just going to shift click and grab six textures and move them from one document to another one. There we go. And hit F to full screen this. And then I'm going to hit Command T because we're going to scale these down. So hit Command T to bring up our transform, transform dialog. Let's click that little chain link on the top there. And then I'm going to just drag the height down. And it's going to scale the width and the height at the same time. There we go. And because these are textures, I really don't mind if I squish these, to be honest. Like, it's not, it's not a big deal, right? It's not like a person's face or anything like that. OK, so we're going to hit Enter there. So now what we have, we have our background and we have all these different textures. I'm going to hit Command G to group those together. So we've got a group of our textures and we've got our background. So now what I want to do is kind of talk about some of the times when you want to apply textures, you can apply it to the entire image. And I would suggest that like if a person's far away or like in, in a field or in snow or something like that, a texture over, t over the entire image gives that like, like really nice artistic feel. Um, in this case, when you have like more of a portrait, you generally don't want textures over across someone's face because it's going to make them look like they've got you know nasty spots and wrinkles and stuff like that on their face. So we're not going to do that, meaning we're going to grab a layer mask and see what we can do with that. So let's go ahead and put a black layer mask on this. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and click on our layer mask button. And that's just going to put a black layer mask on this entire group, making all the textures, all the layers in the group invisible. And now you can just grab a brush and just start painting white right over top of the background. In this case, we are going to be doing the background. And I'm not too concerned about a little bit of overlap onto our subject. We are actually going to be planning to put a little bit of overlap on our, onto our subject. So I'm not really that worried about it. I just don't want it on her face. Um, there we go. And we're just painting this visible here. So white makes things visible on a layer mask, and black makes things invisible. And believe it or not, like that's an OK enough job. I know it doesn't look great right now, but we're going to change the blending mode to some of these, um, some of these textures, and they're going to work a lot better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up this group, and I'm going to shift click on all these layers that are in the group itself. OK, so it's basically going to select all those. So shift click on all those layers, and then I can change the blending mode of all of the layers at the same time. All I have to do is go up here where it says normal and change these down to where it says soft light. OK, so now each one of these layers is now a soft light layer. And you can see how if I turn some of these off and on, how each one of these does have their own effect. So let's just go ahead and start with all of them off. Now, the other thing that we want to do is textures are they're a really great way to just add this interest to the piece. But um, you don't have to use them as they are. Like You can totally adjust them. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab some levels adjustment layers. And we're going to change the like lights and darks and things like that on these layers so they actually blend in a little bit better. Like this. So we'll start one by one. So each of these is soft light. We can see this one, it's nice, but it lightens the image up quite a bit. So if you hit Command-L, what it does is it brings up 
brings up your levels adjustment layer. And then I'm just going to click on this middle point and just bring that to the right a little bit. There we go. So it's adding that nice texture, but it's not like brightening it up too much. We're going to do the same thing here, Command L. And there's a lot of things you can do. Like you can take your white point and make it darker if you want to do that. You can take your dark point and make it lighter. You can have like a little bit less contrast. You can, you can just play around a lot, quite a bit in here. Like if it's too light, what I would recommend is do, you know, bring this to the right to make it a little bit darker. If it's too dark, bring this to the left to make it a little bit lighter. All right, there we go. So this is a wonderful time to kind of play around. And if it's too much of an effect, all you have to do is lower your opacity. There we go. So you have like a little a hint of that texture, but it's not like overwhelming. All right, this one as well, we're just going to bring over to the right. Cool. And we'll lower the opacity on this as well. So this is just kind of fun. Like that texture is like, it's just, it's just cool. I, I think these things are just, they're kind of fun to do. There we go. And let's lower the opacity on that one as well. They're kind of fun and they do add quite a bit of like um, interest to, to an image. There we go. So this is your time just to like play around. Like no, you don't need to take this seriously at all. All right, so I'm getting each of these about to where I want them, and then I'm just going to go in here and like adjust each of the relative like colors and whatnot. Um, but just turning them on and off. You can also adjust the colors. Like let's say this layer, for instance, um, because this one's at 100%, I'm going to do it on this layer. If I hit Command L, I can go into my red channel and take this little slider and bring it to the left or the right to like add more like red or green. Actually, that looks kind of cool with like a little bit of cyan in there, right? Kind of mimics what's going on in the leaves. So you can adjust the lightness and darkness, and you can also adjust what's going on um, for the different colors as well. So just turning these off and on, we can see like the different effects that they have on the image as a whole. And um, yeah, I think that's really nice. I, I like it just like that. Why not? Um, it, this is like totally free reign. You guys can go in and play around and do whatever you want. Um, and you can see, because they are like these soft light layers, even if I go on my layer mask and I paint over top of our subject, you can see it doesn't completely cover her up, right? It's like you get some of the effect of the background, but she's not completely covered up. So I might just go in here with like a very a soft edge brush at a flow of about 20%. And that's just going to let like a, just a tiny little bit of the texture come on over top of, let's like do over top of her hair just a little bit. And that's going to help things like blend in just a little bit more. All right, so you can see my layer mask isn't really that nice, but in this case, it doesn't really matter because it's bringing some of that color and some of that texture in over the top of our subject. We just want to avoid her face because she's got such a nice face. Like, look what happens when I just put this over her face, right? Not really good, unless this is the effect that you're going for. Um, like a zombie, if you were trying to like make a zombie image, this would be a really good way to do it. Just put a texture over across someone's face and, um, you know, like color and things like that. But um, yeah, I think that looks great. And let's just try lowering the opacity just a little bit so it doesn't take away too much from the image. OK, cool. So this solves a great problem. Here in the background, it was just, it, I would, either was like, you know, not perfect enough or, you know, it, it's messed up, but not nearly messed up. So this kind of just like just takes away all the attention from the background and um, just gives it like a, a nice texture, basically. <laughs> It's like you photographed her on a wall that had like crap all over it. But um, in photography world, that looks good a lot of the time, which is very interesting. So that's it, guys. That's how to use those textures. So if you like what we've got going on here, be sure to follow the link where you guys can see the post. You can download the textures that we used here in this tutorial. You can head over to Brooke Shaden's blog and download her textures for free and see a little video on how she uses those textures. And we also have a pro texture pack where you guys can purchase a whole pack of like 100 plus of these types of textures to apply to your images. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. If you like what we got going on here, learn subscribe to our YouTube channel, leave us a comment down below, and share this with every single person you know. I'll learn you later. I'll be watching you. I, I know everyone you know, and I'm gonna ask them if you shared it with them. And if you didn't, you better believe that I'm gonna come to your town with a little magic flute, and I'm gonna play a song, and it's going to make all the people in your town wanna follow me out of the town, and then you are gonna have no friends because we're all gonna go and live in the woods together and braid each other's hair. And you'll be stuck in your town 
alone. <laughs>